everyone, Lady De Winter here, and today we're going to finish up our pot holder. Now, they've changed the size of the yarn. You only get two ounces now instead of 2.5, which kind of disturbs me because 2.5 is what I actually need to finish this project, I think. Now, this is what it looks like when you're getting ready to sew it together. Now, as you can see, I think we need one more row here, so I'm going to make one more row. Yeah, it looks like one more row is what we need. So I'm going to make one more row down to about here. Then I'm going to stop and make the tab. And all this is, and I'll show you, is we went around and around and around and around until we got to this point. As you can see, there, there it is right there. You see it right there. So, so what we're going to do now is we're going to collapse that like that so that it makes a square. And that's how you make the square out of this. So now we're going to do some single crochets. And this whole project is a single crochet stitch. If you make it in any other stitch, it leaves kind of holes and stuff. And you could actually accidentally stick a finger through one of those holes and, and uh, you know, uh, burn yourself. So I like to use the single crochet because it's a good tight stitch, as you see there. There's no holes. So that's why I like this stitch a great deal is because of that. And you know we did the single crochet, wrap, poke your needle through the stitch, wrap your needle, pull up two loops, pull, wrap again, and go through. We'll do that again. Poke through your stitch, wrap your needle, doesn't matter what direction. You have two loops, wrap your needle again, pull through, and that's your single crochet. Now you can, I know YouTube well enough that you can go back and watch that a few hundred times if you need to. <clears throat> and I don't wrap my needle the way most people do, so that's my own style. That's the way that works best for my poor old arthritic hands. Pull some more yarn out. So, now again, as I said earlier in the video, I got this from a, a website called Sheepishly Shearing, or Sheepishly Sharing. So, but this is the end of our pot holder. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to finish it. Okay? So we go all the way up to our little stitch marker. Okay? Now, now that should be almost perfect. Yeah, that looks like a nice square. So we are going to stop at our little stitch marker here. We're going to poke our needle through that one, even with the stitch marker in place. And we're going to go through like that. Now, we want to make the little loop-de-loop -loop that uh, we, we hang it with. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, pull out some more yarn, <laughs> five, six, seven, eight, and see if eight's enough of a loop-de-loop -loop for you. It might be, it might not be, it's not for me, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12. Okay, 12 is usually what I do. Now I'm going to go back through the exact same stitch again. And I am going to use that to close this. Now I'm going to remove my stitch marker. I don't need it anymore. Okay, I don't need it anymore. And now I am going to pull out a generous amount of yarn. And there's a reason for this. You'll see in a minute. A generous amount of yarn because this is what we're going to use to close this with okay so I'm gonna go all the way here and cut my yarn and pull it the rest of the way through because this is what we're going to use to close our with okay so now we have that there we have that now we're going to take and poke through one more time, one more time. Well, we're going to try to poke through one more time. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. We're going to pull this out. We'll pull all, and we're not going to get it caught on our buttons or anything. We'll pull this all the way out. Okay, there we go. We've got that now. We're going to go one more time through. And this is how I lock my stitch. Okay, sort of like that. Okay. 
there we go. I pull that taunt, it locks the stitch in place. Now, what I'm going to do is get out my handy dandy needle threader, if I can get it unhooked from my little baggie. Uh, yeah, sometimes they get hooked on the little bag. They don't mean to, they just can't help themselves. And I'm gonna pull out my favorite needle, which is this one. This is a steel needle, okay? Steel needle, very good needle, very good threader. I'm going to thread my yarn through the needle. And then I'm going to take my needle very carefully without the threader attached. I'm going to move equipment since I keep getting caught on it all. And I am simply going to close this guy with a simple whip stitch. Not hard at all. I'm going to go through this stitch and pull it taunt. And there we go. And I'm going to do the same thing all the way down. Simple whip stitch all the way down, unless it gets caught on the table. And yeah, pulling that is a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you know, some of the things you go through for beauty. So, okay, now we'll go through that over there so it doesn't loop under. And if it loops under, don't worry about it. It's not like it's that big of a deal. I pulled out a lot of yarn that I probably don't need, but I do like to have plenty for my projects just in case. I've cut them off too short before and that was a disaster. So, now we're just going to keep weeding this through here to close it. You can close it using a crochet stitch if you want. I just like this method because I think it makes it look better. So, uh-oh. See what I mean about that, guys? you got to be careful when you're yanking your yarn. So, Now, sometimes I try to catch the stitch from underneath. It just makes it nicer and it closes it more tautly. So every third or fourth stitch, I try to catch both stitches and do it like that because it just makes it nice. And you just keep going like this all the way down. Now I've seen people go back and forth like that too. I've seen them use the crochet hook and crochet it closed. But me, I, I just like it this way. I think it looks really nice. It looks really clean, really pretty. Now this is the second striped one I've made in this pattern because this is, I consider this spring yarn. Because it looks, it just looks like spring to me. And this again is called Lemon Stripes. I got it on Amazon. Uh, although I will say that uh, sugar and cream are, their, their skeins are getting smaller. The price has gone up a little bit. The skeins are smaller. So be very careful because it, you know, you may have to tie on another skein because this skein is just about gone. But I'm eventually going to show you what I do with my scraps of yarn also, so don't worry about that. There's so many things you can make out of scraps of yarn that it is, it's unreal. So, and I keep getting caught. And this might not take you as long as it's taking me, but I am trying to make sure this is all on camera, <laughs> in frame. So, you know, just bear with me, guys. This It gets a little tough trying to make sure this is all in frame because the camera is upside down. I'm going to pull a little bit more yarn in there. The camera's upside down, and it, it's it's really kind of a interesting prospect to try to get this all in the frame. So yeah, here we go. We're almost done. And then I will show you how to fasten off and you will have a pot holder and a very nice one too. They're very nice. They're thick. Uh, you know, you can throw them in the wash machine. 
They come out really nice and clean again, which is kind of nice. There you go. Sometimes you want to try to catch through a stitch. That helps lock your yarn, too. Through the yarn, I mean. Like this one right here, I went through this yarn here. So, and that's not, that's nothing wrong with that. That helps your, your stitch stay in place. It helps your, your stuff stay in place. So it's, it's really not a bad idea to do that. A lot of people do that to lock their yarn. I'm going to go through both stitches again. Like so. Some of them I go through just the ones and some I go through both. It just, uh, to, in my personal opinion, it locks it better. And that's, yeah, this one. So. But like I said, you can use a crochet needle to do this. You can uh, do a zigzag down the center of it. However you want to do it is up to you. Since it's going to be either your pot holder or your gift to someone. It does not matter how you choose to do it. Now, this is a very easy beginner pattern. It doesn't take a lot of uh, knowledge. It just takes one stitch all the way around. Well, two stitches because this is this is a, uh, a, a chain stitch. So, but it's a chain stitch for your tabby and your single crochet. Your foundation row, of course, is a a uh, sing, uh, chain stitch, which either earlier in this video or another one. I don't know how the how long the first one is. I I don't know any of this until I get to editing, folks. Once I edit, I know exactly what I need to do with the video. And sometimes they're going to be a little bit longer. Sometimes they're going to be a little bit shorter. It just depends because of the length of the video and the editing process. So just bear with me. We're almost finished. And then I'm going to tell, show you how to lock this off. Now, I went through several on this bottom because we're getting ready to lock off. And when we do that, we're going to want to have lots of yarn in this needle. Make sure you're going through, not through the loop itself. As you see there, you don't want it, you don't want it to go under like that. You, you don't want that. Unless, unless that's a stitch you want it to look like, then that's different. This is my last stitch here. This will close us off completely. Okay, there we go. That is the last stitch. It's all nice and closed now. You see it's a nice square. Now, we're going to take our yarn and go back up through here to lock our stitches. Okay, and all we're going to do is hide our yarn inside this. Remember, we locked it off up here, but this is not locked off. So we're just going to kind of go through some stitches here and... Since the yarn is all the same color, it's really hard to see. And I'm just going to sew my way all the way back up to here. Now see, this locks it in because now I'm going through multiple strands of yarn to lock this. So this will lock your stitches in really nicely. Some yarn I'm going through the actual piece of yarn, as you can see here. That also helps to lock it in. And it's kind of a hidden stitch because you really can't see it well. Not since it's all the same color. Or varying colors. Now, I'm going to take it all the way up to the top here. And I'm going to come out through this stitch right here. 
And then I'm going to go through this stitch again, through this one, and make a loop. And then I'm going to simply pull it through here, like so. Be careful you don't do it over top of your thing there. And then I'm going to go back down a few more stitches to lock that in place. Now you may have your own way of closing things off and that's fine. Use your way. Use what works best for you. Just because one person in crochet says this is how it's done doesn't make that law. So now we're going to go back down a little bit more and I'll show you how we're going to hide our, our, our yarn. Okay, so now our pot holder is all together. Now, we're going to pull this yarn a little bit taut there. We're going to clip it off right at the seam there, and then we're going to pull it that way. That way your yarn is pulled into your project, and boom, look at that. We have a pot holder, folks. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Now, you can make this with a dishcloth and a couple of matching uh little uh, coasters and make a nice little gift set for someone. Doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't take a lot of yarn, works like a charm. So until next time, this is Lady De Winter reminding you you're never too old to do anything you set your mind to doing. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye for now.